Howdy, Kat here. I'm here to talk more about objects. Specifically, I want to talk about strings. Now we've used, in our programming, we've used a drawstring before and that's allowed us to put text on the screen. So no surprises, a string is text. What we've learnt about objects so far is that we first have to declare them and then we have to instantiate and initialize. Now a string is one of the basically one of the only types that you can do that in one basic step without the equals new string. So I could have string name equals cat. And that would work perfectly fine. I need to use the double quotes around whatever the string is. It can contain spaces, it can contain uppercase, lowercase, and various other symbols, and that's perfectly fine. Strings are one of the things that we use a lot of the time for data manipulation. Many of the programs that we make, um, they involve taking information from the user and maybe giving it back to the user in a different way or using that information to do some kind of calculation or whatever. Now strings have many different methods associated with them. We can uppercase an entire string, we can lowercase, we can take sections out of a string and many, many more things. But it's best to show this on the computer. So let's go to Eclipse. Okay, so we're in Eclipse. In my Java Basic Objects project, I have created a new class called String Objects and this is where we're going to have a look at some strings. So I've set up my applet the way I would with any other applet. Um, and we're going to start off by declaring a string. So string equals, oh, sorry, string, we've got to have it, give it a name, so we're calling it name equals, and we're going to have a name, Pippi Longstocking. Lovely long name there. Now remember that a string is the only object that you can say string, give it a name, and give it a value. All the other objects must call the constructor method of that object type, like color, sky blue equals new color, and then whatever settings you want to give it. So the string object is the exception to the object rule. Okay, so we'll go down to paint, and this is where we often do a lot of our manipulation, and especially this is where we do our anything that requires visual feedback. So let's say we'll start off with putting the text on the screen. So we're going to have a draw string and we'll say the name is and then we're going to add on that variable and we'll pop it at 20, 20 semicolon. So let's just quickly run that one and we have the name is Pippi Longstocking. Doesn't quite fit on the screen there so I might set the size and I can do that in public void in it. I do that by giving it a width and a height. So if I just run that again, it should come up with the set size. Okay. Now looking at something that we can do with a string is we can go name dot and it will show us a bunch of methods that are associated with a string. Now I'm going to create an upper, uppercase version of this name, so I'll use to uppercase. Now if I look in the definition here, it says public string. String means, in this case, it's going to give me a string back. So it will take the name I give it in whatever format, lowercase, uppercase, or a combination of both. It will uppercase the whole lot and then give me the new uppercase version. So what I need to do is I need to make sure there is somewhere for that new version to go. So I'm going to overwrite the old one with the new one. So this will uppercase the name and put it in the box with the label name. So let's just see what happened with that one. We'll copy that drawstring, paste it down here and just put it underneath the other one. and we've got an uppercase version. I can do the exact same thing and lowercase it again, so name dot to lowercase. 
So it's important to remember you have to provide somewhere to, to store the result if it's going to give you a result. So again, we'll just put it further down the screen. There we go. As I've mentioned, there are a number of different methods that are associated with um, strings. One of Some of the ones that I would most commonly use include two uppercase, and that takes any mix of cases and it makes the whole lot uppercase. Two lowercase will take any mix of cases and make the whole lot lowercase. Length will tell me how long a string is and it will give me an integer variable back. Index of will tell me the position of a particular character in a string. And char at will allow me to access the character at a specific position within a string. So if I use to uppercase on something, it will give me a string value back. So I need to always have a string ready to accept the new value. To lowercase also will give me a string back. Length will give me an integer because it will count how many characters there are in a string. Index of will tell me the index of something within the string. So it will also give me an int. And char at will get the character at a specific position. So it will give me a character back. We've already had a quick look at the results of uppercasing and lowercasing a string. But let's have a look at some of the others. Now knowing that my variable was called name, if I wanted to get the length of my string, I would have to declare an int because we just said that uh, length will return a whole number because it will count how many items are in the string. So I might say int len. Now I'm not going to use the word length because that's the name of the method and it's a good habit to get into to not use the same name as methods or any other things because duplicated names can sometimes cause problems. So I'm going to use len, and I would say int len equals, keep draw, moving my text, equals name dot length. And that will look at that string, and it will find out how long it is. Now I've already counted it, and I got to 18. So len should now be equal to 18. I want to point out though that every position in that string has an index and the way that everything in programming works is their indexes don't start counting at 1, they start counting at 0. So the letter P is actually at position 0. The letter G is actually at excuse that, is actually at position 17. So if you count everything from 0 through to 17, that is 18 items. Okay, so indexes start at 0. I have a new pen and it's not very good. So indexes start at 0. Important to remember that one. Let's now take a real quick look at how we might use index of. Now there are cases, particularly when you get names, first name and last name, sometimes you'll want to separate them out into the first name and the last name. And the easiest way to do that is to actually separate it based on where the space is. So what we want to do is we want to find the index of the space and that will allow us then to separate the two parts of the name later. So we already said that index of is going to give us a number. So we might declare a variable called int space. So using the name space, it indicates to me what information it's giving me. And I would have an equals, and then I would again refer to name. So I've always got to tell it which string I'm looking at. So name.index of 
An index of needs some information. It needs to know what I'm looking for. I'm looking for a character. We always refer to characters in single quotes. So I'll put a quote, a space, and then a quote. Remembering just the one space in there. Close the brackets and a semicolon. So what that should do is it should find the space. So P is 0, I is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So space should now be equal to 5. Another quick look at charat. Charat gives me a character, so I need to declare a character ready to accept. Sorry, ready to accept the value. So I might say char first initial. I'm running out of room. And what I might say there is get from name the character at position 0. Now I've said first initial, that would imply that the first initial of the first name to me, that's my the way my brain works. So I'm going to get the character at position 0 and that means that first initial would now have the value of P, a lowercase p. Obviously when you're doing your own string manipulation you might want to find the indexes of different items in the string or different characters or whatever. Use it for your own purposes. I want to show you another aspect of string manipulation that I tend to use quite a lot. So starting with a blank canvas we've got the same name Pippi Longstocking and something that I find is quite useful is a method called substring. And what substring allows me to do is to take a portion of the string and assign it to a new string. Okay, so when I use substring on a, on a string, it takes a portion of that string out. Hopefully that makes some sense. So I might have something like string first. So I'm creating a new string here. String first equals name dot substring. And I'll specify where I want to start taking things from. So I might say 0 to the space. Sorry, just down here. To the space. Now in our last exercise we knew that the space was at 5. The way substring works is it says take from the first value, first value being 0, up to but not including the last value. So it will take from 0, 1, 2, 3, Four, it will stop at 5 and not include 5. So this string first would now contain Pippi. Let's say for example I wanted to start with the name Pippi Longstocking and I wanted to change the formatting so that it appeared as Longstocking comma space Pippi. This is a, a fairly common change of formatting in a lot of text manipulation or name manipulation. So let's have a look at what things that we could do that would allow us to do that. We could separate Pippi and Longstocking into two words by using substring twice. We could also use character at to take out the first initials of each of those. We can use two lowercase on the strings to make sure that they're all lowercase and then we can actually 
for the first letters, we can also use uh, two uppercase on a character and it's used slightly differently. What I'm going to do is I'm going to talk you through this on the computer, how we would go from the scrappy version to the neat version. The other thing that we do at the very end of all of that is we put everything together using the plus. It allows us to concatenate or add together items to create a whole. All right, let's how we can take our let's see how we can take our Pippi Longstocking to a different format. So, as we mentioned, we will need the length. So we can say int len. We also found the space between the letters. We're going to need a string for first name and a string for last name. Let's start off with that. So the first thing that we're going to do down in paint is we're going to give the length a value. So we say len equals name dot length. Here it's telling me it needs an int, as I've already mentioned. It's good always to have a quick look at what is being prompted to you by the program. It's giving me an integer, so I need my integer len ready to accept the value. So int length. And space. We got that by saying name dot index of index of gives me an integer back and it expects a character in the brackets so quote single quote space single quote okay now what we can do is we can get the first name so first name is equal to name dot substring and it starts at zero and it stops at and does not include the space. Okay, the last name, it goes from where, oh sorry, name.substring, it goes from the space plus one because we, again, we don't want to include the space, so we go from one past the space and we want it to finish at the end which is len. Remembering that because all strings start at the index 0 even though um, our string has a length of 18 the last index is 17 so it will go up to but not include that 18. Now I just want to also show you quickly I'll just comment that one out and copy that If I was to give this substring just one value, it would say start here and go to the end of the string. So if you have a, a specified start point and end point, and that end point is not the end of the string, then you must use the one that takes two parameters, a start and a finish. If it goes to the end of the string, you can just give it the one. So I'll leave both in there for the moment. Now let's just have a look put out a draw string and just check if we got the correct values. So first name and we'll interpret what that variable contains. We'll put that at 20, 20 and we're also going to get the last name and put it just below. Let's see if our code has worked so far. So we've got Pippi and we've got long stocking. Now what we might do is we might actually want to um, make the L an uppercase and make the P an uppercase. So what we can do 
is we can get those characters out, the P and the L. So we might set up two characters. So we'll have char first initial. And char last initial. So by last and first initial, I'm, I'm implying first initial of the first name, first initial of the last name. So again, the naming is up to you, but try and use things that make sense to you. Okay. So let's say that first initial is name and the character at position zero. So the first initial of the first name. The last initial is the character at the space plus one. Okay, let's just copy these draw strings and see if we actually got what we wanted out of those strings. So we'll change that to first initial, last initial, replace those variable names with the variable, oops, the new variable names, and we'll pop them on the same lines as their originals, but across from them. That'll make sense when you actually see what I'm talking about. Okay, we'll run that. Oops, need to move them further across. Probably move them further across again. Okay, so first name is Pippi, the first initial of that is P, last name is Longstocking, and the last initial there is L. Now, I do actually want to uppercase those letters. So I can uppercase a character, but it works slightly differently to a string. So what I would do here is, again, it's going to give me the uppercase version, so I need somewhere to put it. So first an equal, initial equals, and here we put character dot two uppercase, and then we have to tell it what character we're making uppercase, which is first initial. So I'll do the same with the last initial. And that should uppercase those. Now, lazy little me, I'm just going to move these drawstrings down to see if that worked. Okay, let's run that quickly. Now, if it doesn't uh, print the applet the right size, just close it and run it again. Okay, now we've got uppercase versions of those. And what we want to do is we want to add them together to the first name and the last name. So what I could say is first name equals the first initial plus the existing version of first name. Okay, I'm just going to copy that one. So I'm just going to provide myself some visual feedback here. I'm just going to move this one uh, further down the screen. So I'm going to pop that at 80 down. Oops. So what I've done is we've got that uppercase first initial. We've got the first name. We've put the, get the two together by concatenating them and we've placed it in the variable first name. We're going to run this and there is going to be a problem with it. So I have a double P. Now what I can do to get rid of that is I could change my initial substring to not include zero, to actually start one further than that, at one. Now if I run that, I've then got Pippi. 
So I'm going to do the same with last name. I'm going to bump that over by two so it doesn't actually include that first letter. Let's also make the last name equals last initial plus last name. We'll copy that one. Last and last. Bump it down the screen. And we've got Pippi and Longstocking. We've been very successful in separating out the two names, formatting them as we would like them formatted. However, we have not yet put them together with the surname, comma, space, last name. To do that, we can change the value of our original variable, which was name, and we can say name is equal to last name plus, and then we can actually put some text in the middle there, comma, space, plus first name. So that will overwrite Pippi Longstocking with Longstocking, comma, space, Pippi. Oops, I'm sure it's done that, but how about we actually print it on the screen? The new name is plus name. We'll print it at 2140. When I'm doing text-based exercises, I tend to just drop each new line down by about 20. In this case, I just wanted to separate it out a little bit more. So we started with Pippi Longstocking and we've ended with Longstocking, comma, space, Pippi.